To start, head into the building past electric cherry and turn on the power. There's now three fuses you'll need to obtain in any order and place it in their nearby soul canisters and fill with zombie kills. The three fuses are named as the blood fuse, the crane fuse, and the furnace fuse. The blood fuse is obtained by entering zombie blood and finding the fuse in the hands of a bloodied corpse in one of several locations. The fuse will not be visible unless you are in zombie blood. The locations include one in the corner of the spawn room, to the left of the spawn entrance to the main building, next to the barrels underneath Juggernog, opposite Mule Kick in the power room, in one of the open rooms in the block building, and as in my game, right in the far back corner of the main factory building. The soul can to fill the blood fuse is found near the main spawn area. For the crane fuse, you need to grab electric cherry and then head to this corner of the courtyard and simply trigger electric cherry next to this fuse box and the crane will move, dropping and revealing the fuse for the crane. Soul can for this is just inside the building from the courtyard. For the furnace fuse, there are a lot more steps, but the next thing you need to do is turn on the packer punch and to do that, you'll first need to find three numbers and punch them into the number card system just found in the main entrance to the factory. The number locations are as follows. Next to the yellow candle found in the power room, next to the blue candle found in one of the already opened rooms in the block building, and next to the red candle found in the main factory area. The candles correspond to the lights above the numbers. You just need to punch in the number sequence and right next to you there'll be a door in the main spawn area that will open revealing a max ammo, but also on the floor is a wrench that you need to grab. As you'd assume there are now three valves around the map that you need to turn to unlock Pack-a-Punch. One is found to the right as you you come into the main factory building, another is just to the right of Juggernog, and the final one is found right on the opposite end of the Speed Cola courtyard. This will cut the flames obstructing pack a punch and you'll be free to upgrade your weapons. This is important because the next step, which is for the furnace fuse, requires you to shoot your targets with an upgraded weapon. Inside the main block building, you'll see a door that says you need to shoot eight teddy bears to actually unlock it. So that's what we're going to do now, and here are the locations. In the Speed Cola courtyard above the truck, in the back corner of spawn outside of the window barrier atop a cabinet, underneath the staircase on a barrel just to the left of the main factory entrance, just left of a lantern found to the right of the AK-74U wall by in the factory, in between the barrels underneath the staircase to the left of Juggernog, on an overwatch balcony just to the top left of Electric Cherry, in the far distance from Deadshot, and inside the mechanical core just found opposite Mule Kick. This will open the red door, revealing a room to take back Daryl's crossbow. This crossbow will also need to be upgraded at the Packer Punch. Now what you need to do is you'll need to wait for Negan to spawn, kill him, and take the Lucille Bat. Use that bat to break the wooden obstruction in the far corner of the factory room and and it will reveal a room where you can grab some gold. With Daryl's crossbow upgraded, head to the right of Double Tap and you'll see an open furnace. Simply shoot the upgraded Daryl's crossbow into the furnace to light it up. Now what you'll want to do is place the gold in the furnace and you'll have to wait a few rounds for it to melt down. Once done, it will be a key and you just need to grab that and take it to unlock the hidden room which is found just past Deadshot over the sandbags. Inside this room is the furnace fuse. You'll then want to take it back to the main factory and put it into the soul canister. Once you've filled all three soul canisters from the fuses, all you need to do is head back to spawn to the teleport pad and interact with it to start a lockdown. There are no hidden surprises here, all you need to do is just survive the lockdown and after that it will give you a perkaholic and will also reveal the Bible ending right at that same teleport pad. Once you grab that Bible ending, you have successfully beaten the Sanctuary by Broads. It's a truly awesome map for zombies fans everywhere, especially Walking Dead fans. The last part I'll touch on in this video is how to build the shield. As it's a transit shield, there's only two parts and there are three locations for each. Part one is a car door and can be found just opposite to the right of stamina. Alternatively, it can be found next to the desk near the yellow truck or opposite the factory main entrance on some trash cans. The frame can be found just next to the staircase leading up to Jug, inside a wheelbarrow in the right corner of the PKM wall by, or to the left of the block staircase found to the left of Juggernaut. You'll then be able to build the shield at any one of the buildable benches, my favorite being the one inside the factory. And there is your complete map breakdown for the Sanctuary by Broads. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Oh.